Thank you so much, Megan, and thank you all for joining us today. So after a year and a half of taking defensive positions, businesses are ready to grow again. In fact, it's the number one priority of CFOs right after ensuring the health and well-being of their employees. Businesses are investing in growth generating activities, but to do all that, they're going to need cash and lots and lots of cash. And that's where accounts payable comes in. By optimizing the way you pay your suppliers, you're able to free up cash to help drive business growth. And during today's webinar, David and I are going to show you how to do just that. Before we get started, we wanted to give David a few moments to tell you about the sponsor of today's webinar, Finexio. David? Thank you, Mark. Um, so we're about to have a lot of fun. I'll keep this short and sweet and almost adjective free, but not completely. So uh, thanks for joining. Finexio, we are laser focused with what we do, which is we help CFOs across the country, hundreds of CFOs in just our six year life cycle already as we rapidly grow. What do we do? Why do they turn to us? We help them move the money. That's right. Move the money in ways that create efficiency, the AP the accounts payable, ways that create efficiencies with people, time, energy, and create higher priority focus from the staff in other areas. It was virtually never before possible, but now with Finexio it is. And at the same time, we help create basis points possible for all the spend through AP above and beyond where any bank or any other organization could go. CFOs love us. Thank you. <laughs> We look forward to hearing your insights throughout today's webinar, David. But first, we're going to start with a poll question, which is now displayed on your screen. We want to know, what is your finance department's single top priority? Is it reducing operational costs? Is it improving cash flow and optimizing your working capital? Is it more tightly managing your corporate spend? Is it finding ways to mitigate the risk of fraud? Or is it something else? Take a moment to respond to the poll question now displayed in your screen, and we're going to discuss the results in just a moment. So, David, when you talk to CFOs, what's top of mind for them these days? So, shockingly, of course, there's two areas, but the first area, which is most shocking, is that is about around the people and process, things that are happening that they can do to free up time and money from their staff who is overwhelmed. That's huge. And when I said shockingly, Mark, it's because that area where we come into play to not only do this above and beyond what may be plausible in their minds, we also create this revenue share through many other levers, but they still appreciate the people and process impact more. Of course, who doesn't want revenue share, but people and process, it's the driver. So when you're talking to CFOs about freeing up that cash and freeing up their people and refocusing the resources, what role do CFOs think AP should play in all of this, David? So this is huge. It's an aha moment. And to be frank with you, um, I think I lost that battle of the aha moment with the gentleman who's in the audience today that I invited in but he wasn't quite getting it. <laughs> so I'm not naming names, but here's the deal. You have, is your clothes out of whack? What is it? Is it 45 days and you need it to be seven to 10 to be comfortable? Is payroll, what's happening with payroll, AR? Well, you know what? Traditional AP, I'll get there when I get the others. That's not the way to think anymore. You're behind, you're not the leader that's finding what just shifted in the world, the paradigm shift of finance, and that's what's happened here at Finexio through the vision that's been created. Now impact AP sooner and it'll help you pull the levers. The aha moment is stop downgrading AP in your priority. It's going to expand your capability everywhere else. We asked our attendees, what is your finance department's top priority? We have an even split here, David. This never happens. One third of our attendees say they're focused on reducing operational costs. And in today's economy, that's no surprise. Every business wants to do more with less. Another third of our attendees say they're looking for ways to more tightly manage their corporate spending. And another third of our attendees want to find ways to mitigate the risk of fraud. Does this surprise you, David? No, not at all. Not at all. Table stakes on fraud nowadays, it's huge. And that's, that's key. 
when we think about AP automation, in some cases, AP leaders tend to think that this isn't the time to automate their AP. After all, the, the business is trying to hoard cash, not invest it in technology. But when we start talking about payments automation, David, this is a case where AP departments can have their cake and eat it too. No, you can get those operational improvements as well as working capital improvements. Isn't that right? You paid for the cake. We're going to help you eat it. That is right. Yeah. So when we look at what's going on in the market today, we find that cash flow is more important than ever. It's always been king, but today businesses need it to help them navigate this tough economy and to position themselves for the recovery that they hope is coming. And CFOs have seen their role change over the past 18 months. This started before the pandemic, but it's accelerated as a result of the events over the past 18 months. Today, most CFOs are decidedly focused on growth. In fact, after ensuring the health and well-being of their employees, it's the number one thing on a CFO's mind. And in many cases, the CFO's entire job responsibilities are adapting to this growth-minded mindset. We're seeing that it's not enough for CFOs just to be a financial scorekeeper anymore. Nope. The business, the president, the CEO, and the board, they don't want the CFO to just tell them what happened with the cash. They want them to tell them what will happen. How will trends impact? What if we open up this plant? What if we launch this new product line? They want the CFO to be a strategic driver of the business. Business. And that's really shown in the stats now displayed in your screen. 81% of CFOs now see that targeting new areas of value is one of their top job responsibilities. 77% say that driving business operational transformation is one of their key focuses. Today, businesses are looking for ways to grow, and the CFO is in many cases at the controls. How is it many businesses are growing? Well, these are some of the more common drivers, right? Increased sales and marketing, new product lines, new business units, global expansions, even mergers and acquisitions. The common denominator in all of these different growth drivers is cash. You're going to need lots and lots of cash to make this all work. Now, we all know that cash is ordinarily king, right? It pays for our facilities. It lets us buy raw materials and goods, helps us manufacture finished products, helps us sell and market our products, distribute them, and pay for our folks. But the thing is, is that even a high-flying company can experience issues with their cash flow. And when that happens, everything grinds to a halt. There's really four primary causes of cash flow issues. The first is scaling costs. One of the biggest misnomers about cash flow issues is that it doesn't happen to fast growing companies. Well, the reality is, is that even high velocity companies run out of cash to fund some of their growth driving initiatives. What's more, Economic downturns can play havoc on an organization's cash flow. We saw this over the past year. DSO is higher. In fact, for 40% of businesses that have experienced DSO, they're reporting DSO of 10 days or more compared to before the economic downturn. Bad debt is higher. We're seeing more write-offs. We're seeing more customer disputes. All of this is the kind of thing that can make it harder to have cash on hand. Many businesses suffer seasonal fluctuations. They have focuses on when they see seasonal sales, such as a quarter where their product is particularly popular and then another where it's not as good. And so they have to find ways to smooth out those dips in their cash flow. And then of course, the fourth issue of cash flow issues, the one we tend to not wanna talk about as much is just weak cash management. Yeah, it happens. Organizations don't do a good job of minding their cash in some cases. Well, when CFOs are looking for ways to help their business optimize cash, it's going to be all hands on deck. And interestingly, they're finding one powerful ally in an unexpected place. Their accounts payable department. That's right. I said accounts payable. The people who for years were perceived as a tactical back office function, accounts payable, were the people in the basement with the hand-me-down office furniture and the coffee pot that didn't work so good. The only time people called AP, yeah, when something went wrong. 
Well, that all started to change. And it actually started to change in the last financial crisis that we went through. Corporate America realized that if only they could have unlocked all that data that flows through accounts payable, they could have mitigated to some extent the impact of that financial meltdown. Well, you know what? That trend has picked up steam. And over the past several years, it's grown even more. Over the past three years, we've seen a huge influx in departments that are now seen as very or significantly important to their department. And that brings us to our next poll question, which is about to be displayed on your screen. This time we wanna know, what percentage of your supplier payments are made electronically? All of them? You don't cut a single check in your AP department? Is it between 75% and 99% of all your supplier payments are made electronically? Is it between half and 74% of your supplier payments are made electronically? Is it one quarter to 49% of all your supplier payments are made electronically? Or is it less than 25% of your supplier payments? You are a paper push and check print machine. Take a moment to respond to the poll question now displayed on your screen. And we'll discuss the results in just a moment. So what's happened over the past 18 months, David, when it comes to the adoption of electronic payments? Well, people know they want it, but going to get it is a different story. It starts off with a lot of steam and a lot of energy. And then who does it fall upon? The team who's doing what? A lot of stuff. What happens with the results? Hey, sometimes pretty good. Not always, but is pretty good what you were going for? Who do you work with who has a US financial-based support service that works with their cloud-based SaaS to build a vendor relationship management that keeps going and going and going with tricks up our sleeve that go well beyond what any company can tackle themselves? That's key. What's been the biggest challenge for businesses in migrating to electronic payments? is the vendor relationship management. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so it hurts because you never know, you know, from the audience out there and the CFOs we talk to, we're talking to dozens daily. You never know if they're gonna be coming from that heartfelt opinion of, we just don't have enough resource to go after it or, which is terrible, or, I mean, I think, you know, we do that, ah. Either way, they're not getting it. One doesn't know what they're doing wrong. The other just knows they don't have enough. It's painful what they don't need to be going after. it. This is where outsourcing is powerful. They don't understand the options. They don't trust in the options. They've never really seen someone who can work hand in hand, a, a new we have a supplier enablement team, the best in the country, hands down. There's not a lot to compete with, first of all. Yeah, who else is gonna do what we do? CFOs don't really understand the options now and their teams are pinned down. And, and that part is where we come in and do what I've been told by CFOs, it's not my word. This is how Finexio does magic. So I love saying that, I love repeating that, that I've had CFOs commonly tell me they feel it's magic. That's the thing, Mark. We know that many AP departments accelerated their migration to electronic payments simply because they couldn't get into the office during government shutdowns over the past 18 months. Do you think we're going to see a continuation of that trend or do you think that departments are going to take their foot off the gas pedal now that the worst seems to be over? Yeah. And so I love that question and you see it, you know, addressed by all the leading authorities address it. And here's my answer. I'm just going off of what we at Finexio hear um, in many, many discussions weekly with CEOs and CFOs. And that is that the world shifted. Look, the world shifted. It's never going to go back the same. How much will it bounce back? There's going to be some elasticity, but it's shifted. And it's already shifted the way we think and the way we have to prepare for the future and the next you know, torpedo into how an organization runs itself. So it's all it's changed forever now. You have to build your organization for the types of solutions where Finexio can bring you up to speed quickly. We asked our attendees, what percentage of your supplier payments are made electronically? Look at this, David, 75 to 99% of supplier payments are made electronically at nearly three quarters of the organizations on the phone today, bravo. However, you still have some work to do, David. 10% of our attendees say that between 50% and 74% of their 
payments to suppliers are made electronically. Another 10% peg it in between a quarter and 49% of their payments are made electronically. And another 10% of our attendees have lots of work to do. It's less than 25% of all their payments are made electronically. The fact is, is that no matter where you are in the electronic payments migration, it behooves you to move as fast as you can to electronic payments because any way you slice it, the more paper and manual processes in your organization, in other words, the more checks your organization writes, the greater the operational inefficiency. Every day, 84% of the typical accounts payables practitioner's time is bogged down with manual activities, keying data, shuffling paper, chasing down information, fixing errors, mistakes, and responding to phone calls and emails from suppliers about where things stand in the process. All of this wastes lots of time and slows our processes down. That makes AP the most time-consuming finance and administration function. And in my mind, that's really saying something. When you consider about some of the dogs we have at f and I'm thinking of tax and audit reporting. I'm thinking of accounts receivable. No, it's AP that controllers say is the most labor-intensive, time-consuming function. And it really shows up in a number of ways. First, many organizations are flying blind. When you have all those paper and manual-based processes, it's hard to know where things stand in the process. Consider that financial close that David was alluding to earlier in this webinar. In many cases, organizations are managing the financial close using what? Spreadsheets. Those relics of the 1980s that should have gone the way of Millie Vanilli, Parachute Pants, and ALF. What was ALF all about? <laughs> and when you have spreadsheets, well, now you've got to take the time to manually produce them. They're outdated the minute you hit save. They're easily corrupted. They're not always accessible. And then if you're a multi-subsidiary organization, what do you have to do? You have to roll them up to the headquarter level. And in many cases, in many cases, you don't have great integration between all your systems. And so now, now you're going to be doing more rekeying. And if you're using multiple payments products from a bank, what's going to happen then? Then you're going to have multiple bank statements to reconcile and deal with. In all, it's a lot of paper, a lot of manual process, and not a whole lot of visibility. What's more, when you have paper processes, you're also going to have really weak control over your payment timing. We're all familiar with the dynamic. Suppliers want to get paid sooner. We want to hang on to our cash as, as buyers. Everybody wants to mitigate the risk. The problem is paper processes don't please anyone in this scenario. It's hard for us to control our payment timing. And the statement is true. Time is money. So how can we fix all this? How can we help the CFO drive business growth? How can we free up cash? Well, one way to do it is by optimizing your supplier payments. And I'm not talking about just automating them here. I'm talking about getting the most out of the way you pay your suppliers. If you automate your supplier payments, you're going to provide your CFO with another way to find and fund solutions to drive long-term growth. What's more, you're going to transform your AP function into a strategic powerhouse. You're going to become that information hub, that cash generating machine that's going to help your business grow. A lot of businesses are already waking up to the power of AP. What they're doing is, is they're automating their supplier payments. And as our poll question from just a few moments ago suggests, more businesses are making more of their payments to suppliers electronically than ever before. Look at this data from my friends at IOFM. Over the past 18 months, they have seen a huge swing in the number of businesses that are making payments electronically. In fact, the percentage of AP departments that make at least half of their payments via paper check has declined by a full seven percentage points since the start of the pandemic. That's unheard of. But what's really amazing is this. 3% of all IOFM members now are completely electronic. They don't make a single check payment, not to the pizza guy, not to the kid who mows the lawn, and not to anyone else. They have moved to electronic touch-free processing and payments. Well, what's going on here? What's going on here is that businesses know that if they really want to optimize their financial engine, they need to go electronic. Now, that's not to say it's easy. There are things that stand in the way of moving to electronic payments. In some cases, it's hard for us to be able to onboard those suppliers. Who has the time to do it with our AP teams who are working longer hours? In many cases, well, 
we don't have the resources to, to manage paper check payments. We have so many details that we have to clean up in our vendor master database. We don't even know who to call about electronic payments. And in some cases, we are dealing with the baggage of antiquated systems that make it hard to pay our vendors electronically. The good news is, is that emerging technologies make it easier than ever for us to migrate to electronic payments. AP Payments as a Service, cloud-based solutions make it easy, reliable, and flexible to pay our suppliers. Here you have a single platform that allows you with a single file to pay your suppliers in the preferred method according to the payment terms. They automatically reconcile the data for payments. So we get out of the whole paper chase and keying game. We're able to have portal access so that you can have on-demand reporting and analytics for both you as well as your supplier. No more phone calls and emails. Imagine that. And what's more, now you're able to get all that reporting, all that visibility into what's going on with your cash and spending. This isn't a piecemeal solution. This isn't another portal from a bank that's going to make you have more back-end reconciliation headaches. This is a complete platform that allows you to automate AP from end to end. And if you do this, if you take a holistic approach to paying your suppliers electronically, now you're going to start moving your AP department into something that's going to drive cash for the business. And it does it in a couple of ways. First, you're going to reduce your operational costs. Let's face it, it takes a lot of time and money to cut paper checks to our suppliers. In fact, a paper check payment costs 30 times more than an ACH payment. That's according to NACHA. Additionally, it takes a lot of employee time to go ahead and cut those checks. And all that time that employees are cutting checks and chasing down approvals and stuffing envelopes and dealing with calls from suppliers, well, that's time that they don't have to analyze data or collaborate with stakeholders or even clean up your filthy vendor master database. Yes, I'm looking at you, ma'am. This is money that you can now invest back in the business. When you reduce your overhead associated with paying your suppliers, now we can invest it in things that matter, growth generating activities. But that's not the only way that your organization is able to reduce costs. You're also able to do it through early payment discounts. Now, we're all familiar with this concept, right? 80% of all suppliers are willing to exchange a discount in the invoice due amount for earlier payment, right? Standard early payment discounts, about one and a half, two 2% of the invoice face amount, right? This, this makes perfect sense. Well, in the past, it took us so long to approve invoices and cut paper checks that the door slammed shut on the opportunity to, to earn early payment discounts. We were literally leaving money on the table. Well, in some cases, we were passing up early payment discounts because it just didn't make sense for us to use our cash on our balance sheet to go ahead and accept those. So what do AP Payments as a Service Solutions do? They offer another alternative that is a win-win for you as well as your supplier supply chain financing. In this case, now an approved invoice is paid early by a third party who's financing that transaction. You, you pay the invoice to terms to that third party and you're going to share in some revenue. So what happens here? Well, your suppliers get paid early. They get the cash they need to help fund their operations. You, you get a stronger, healthier supplier, and you get some revenue sh you share. This is a great way to unlock cash that you can, again, invest back in your business. What's more, for a growth-minded business, you need your suppliers to be healthy, and supply chain financing helps you do just that. And that brings us to our third poll question, which is about to be displayed on your screen. This time we want to know. This time we want to know. I just realized we were not, we were sharing our poll question. There we go. This time we want to know, does your organization currently offer supply chain financing to its suppliers? Yes. No, but we plan to deploy it within six months. No, but we plan to deploy it within six to 12 months. No, but we plan to deploy it within 12 to 24 months. No, and we have no plans to deploy it. Take a moment to respond to the poll question. Now displayed on your screen, and we'll discuss the results in just a moment. David, what's the biggest benefit to supply chain financing for suppliers? 
Well, it's a chance to capture basis points on all the spend. Talk to me about that. Well, you know, I mean, it's, uh, traditionally, what do you think? You're like, oh, oh, I'm hearing I can get some revenue share. Oh, you're talking about a card. Hey, man, been there, done that. Or, you know, who my, you know, we love Chase or you insert the bank. But do you really? I mean, come on. Nobody really loves their bank. You end up working for the bank. They create products and then your team ends up having a lot of work to do. So what, what I'm talking about to bring it back home is this is where the strategic piece uplifts what CFOs can do. Now on areas they didn't think they could get revenue share, there's a possibility for revenue share through this lever impacting cash flow at the same time and the revenue share that's basis points, that's cash back in other ways than just a card on spend non-traditionally thought was gonna be cash back. You know what I mean, Mark? Absolutely. We asked our attendees, does your organization currently offer supply chain financing to its suppliers? Half of the attendees say they don't, David, but they plan to deploy it within the next six to 12 months. You're looking like the Cheshire cat, David. Another 25% of our attendees said no, but we plan to deploy it within the next one to two years. 25% of our attendees say no, and they have no plans to deploy it. Speak to those 25% of attendees who say they have no plans to deploy it. What are they missing out on, David? They have no plans to deploy it. Well, you know, there's one way to find out for everybody. Um, we conduct an analysis around this essentially on our own dime rather quickly to help them figure out, you know, if, if they're right. Maybe they're, maybe they're right. Maybe they know something specific about their environment they think that you and I aren't addressing. They should talk to us and let us dig deeper into that because they may not be right and there might be a lot of money left on the table. We don't want to leave money on the table. Nobody wants to leave money on the table. One other way that you could free up cash and get some of that money off the table is by improving your day's payable outstanding. And when you pay suppliers with certain virtual card programs, it helps you do just that. Much like a card that we're used to as a consumer, that bill doesn't come due for several weeks. And it works in the same way when you pay your suppliers with card. And instantly, you're able to extend your DPO by a couple of weeks without ever having to have those uncomfortable conversations with your suppliers about extending their payment terms. This is money that you can use to avoid expensive borrowing costs, to pay down debt and to invest back in the business. In some cases, AP departments are able to generate so much income from virtual card rebates that now they're able to turn the department into a revenue center. Another way that automating supplier payments helps transform your AP department and generate cash that the business can use for growth is through those real-time payment insights. We know that there's greater demand than ever for access to the invoice data that comes through our AP departments. There's no surprise there, right? Think about it. AP data can help us know where things stand with our cash flow, help us know how we're spending our business's money, and it can help identify potential anomalies that might suggest risk. Thing is, is that in many cases, organizations aren't fully tapping these insights, right? We have these convoluted, semi-automated processes where it's hard to roll up data. Remember that spreadsheet discussion from before? I don't have to remind you, do I? Well, what happens is, is when you deploy an end-to-end -end payment solution now, now you're able to get all that visibility in one place. And that allows you to get those insights to know exactly what's going on with your payments. Graphical dashboards show you exactly where payments stand in the process. You can instantly see pending, in process, completed payments, drill down capabilities, help you uncover trends in your payments, exports, allow you to send data to downstream systems so that you're able to make use of it across the enterprise. Mobile access allows senior execs who are on the go to instantly know what's going on with their cash. And ad hoc reporting, it allows you to get at those analytical tools you need to make strategic decisions decisions. The message David and I want to leave you with today is that chances are someone in your organization right this very moment is focused on how do I grow the business. And one way to do it is through accounts payable automation. Cash means more in times like these. You want to find ways to drive down growth, debt. You want to find ways to invest in growth. You want to find ways to transform your business so you can gain a competitive edge and be the in the winner's circle. And one way to do it is by automating the way you pay your suppliers. Today, most of our supplier 
payment programs, well, they're piecemeal. They cost too much. They take too long. They create too many errors. They provide too little visibility. And they frustrate our suppliers as well as our internal stakeholders. Imagine, imagine if you can optimize that process. And now you're able to have this highly efficient, intelligent process that can not only make your suppliers happy, it can also generate cash for your business. That's exactly what an AP payments as a service solution does. It changes the way AP works. We also want to invite you to our next webinar where we're gonna take a deeper look at how it is that you can leverage supply chain financing in your organization. The webinar is called the benefits of paying your suppliers faster. This might make some senior execs cringe, but we're gonna lay out the reasons that accelerated payments can be a win-win for you as well as your suppliers. Well, that's what's on our minds. Let's find out what's on your minds. If you haven't already submitted a question for David and I, go ahead, use that Q&A tool on your screen to send them to us now. We'll answer as many questions as time allows. David, our first question from an attendee. They're wondering what's involved in deploying an AP payments as a service solution. And the thing about that is, I think that that question always comes with some anxiety, like, poof, what's involved? That's how it was probably, it's tight for reading it. But I think what they're really saying is, what's involved in capturing all this type of value with a trepidation? And the beautiful piece is no trepidation necessary. We take our customers paperless completely within week one, digitize. We hear the word automate a lot, but let's be real, we digitize. We make this very seamless. We do it hundreds of times. We move hundreds of millions of dollars frequently. And when it comes to onboarding, I can tell you that you'll meet some of the, the smartest people I've ever met out there in financial institutions who work for us, who solve these, work hand in hand with our customers to make onboarding a real pleasure and to alleviate that brain damage, if you will, that most people would expect. So it's a hand-holding process of how we, we go about it. There's a lot of things you know, per industry we're working in that we can make quick headway on, but we have to customize. We don't think it's a one fit for everybody. So um, what people experience is a stage of onboarding where we're always telling them what's coming next and setting that expectation. In fact, we just got some great feedback from a client, um, a new customer. I'm sorry, you know what, Mark? I, I won't say their name until the case study's out. Okay. Most of the onboarding, the CFO discussing with our CEO, Ernest Walson, bam, out of the park. Yes, there, there's some areas always like, hey, you know what, look at this, improve this a little here. You guys are, are, are tracking, we're always listening, but overall, A plus, that's what people can expect from onboarding with us. Another attendee writes, does a company have to be of a certain size in order for electronics payments automation to make sense? Well, great question. And so here's the reality of it. Pretty much any company moving a few million dollars a year in AP is leaving money on the table. So, but what about how to work with, with Finexio? Who's your ideal client? We work with companies of all sizes. Yes, lots of the companies that we work with are $100 million organizations or billion dollar organizations, but we do work with a variety of smaller companies. It really has a lot to do with what that total AP is coming through. And you know, I, honestly, if somebody has in that $10 million range you know, a year, there's, there's a lot of money on the table. We can show money for other people um, and then they have to decide the value of what that's worth. And I would always say, go get that money. But when you start having at least 10, 20 you know, million in AP a year, wow, this number gets to be almost criminal not to go after it, really. So I hope that helps. Another attendee writes, do you find that suppliers are more amenable to accepting electronic payments as a result of the economic downturn? Well, yes, yes, we do. We do find that. But here's the thing. Um, what we, the real trick is that we find that it's the approach. And it's not that you can hit it in one approach. It's a multiple approach, a multiple tiered relationship building with each vendor, with each supplier. And so, yes, they're open to it, but they're going to be even more open to it if you're coming at them 
the right way. And we all know that. So just don't want that to be overlooked. That's what we specialize in. Another attendee writes, what's involved in integrating your solution with our ERP? Oh, okay. Well, we're ERP agnostic. And we would have to be to have grown rapidly as we have. Because um, having been a, you know, a gentleman who owns businesses and has sold many ERP systems myself, um, there's a lot of them out there, Mark. They're, they're all different. Sure, there's some common threads. We know, you know, when you reach a certain stature, there's a certain, you know, flavor or two you want to be on. I'm not going to highlight anybody over the other. But we're agnostic. We integrate with all types of ERP. And in areas where we found some, some offshoots, a little rare, um, we have an amazing team, IT team, product team that works together to find those solutions. So far, we haven't hit a roadblock yet, so not a problem with Finexia. Another attendee writes, our senior management has been reluctant to migrate to electronic payments because of the perceived loss of check float. What would you say to them? Wow. <laughs> Okay. I mean, oh, wow. Yeah. Would you say wow? <laughs> sure. I mean, because, well, I'm, you know, I'm surprised to hear that sometimes. I mean, yeah, it comes up. I mean, it's a valid question and it comes up. But at the end of the day, um, I mean, would this really be an inhibitor? It, with Finexio, don't worry. <laughs> We've got you covered. It's, it's worth going after. Let us show you and talk to your leadership. And help there's more behind that i think there's more there let us talk to you with your leadership about how to address that so yeah definitely come to us but it should not be an inhibitor but sure I mean, valid question not a concern we'll take care of it and that will be our final word hey david thanks so much for taking time today to uh to share your insights with us and thank you all for taking time out of your busy days to join us. If you'd like more information about how you can use supplier payments to free up cash for your organization, invite you to contact David and the team at Finexio to learn more. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Megan, Ms. Megan. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, David, for your energy and insights today. And thank you to all of our attendees for your participation. Please be on the lookout for follow-up emails with today's recorded presentation, which will be available on demand, and information on our next webinar session. We hope to have you all with us again very soon. Take care, everyone.